Father, I pray that you will be able to catch up. Let the moment you know Allah is the most, the overcapity. The overcapity is the most important subject in anatomy because we deal with the education of the human being. The oracuity is the first part of the digestive system, that is, the first part of the gastrointestinal system that begins from the mouth, the pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. It is the part of the GIT. It is adapted to receive food by ingestion, break it into small particles by mastication, and mix it with saliva. So, the function of the oral cavity for digestive system is uh, uh, digest the food and break it and mix it with the saliva. The boundary of the mouth it is bounded anteriorly by the lip, posteriorly by oral pharyngeal isthmus. Isthmus become a, a more or less circular parachar that bears the entrance to the pharynx, the roof of the oral cavity. The mouth is uh, the upper border of it, which is formed by hard pellet in front and soft pellet behind. The floor, it is the lower part of the oral cavity, is formed by largely by a tier to third of the tongue and by the reflection of mucosa membrane from the side of the tongue to the abdominal mucosa on the mandible. Laterally, by the side of the mouth, by the cheek, it is boundaries of the oral cavity. The histological feature of the mouth, the oral cavity is lined with the mucous membrane composed of satisfied squamous epithelium and underlying dense irregular collagen connective tissue that houses minor cellular gland within is connective tissue. So, by this figure, we shall see the epithelium that have squamous, satisfied squamous cell epithelium and underlying the mucosa and the muscle of the uh, underlying it. The oral cavity it contains this part. Have three parts that have contained the mouth the teeth that have upper and lower dentition, the tongue with its mobile structure within the oral cavity, and we have glands that receive the secretion from salivary glands to the oral cavity. The mouth have two parts the outer part, called it vestibule that is the space between the lip and cheek and the uh, uh, alveolar process and the dentition is contained that have the, uh, the vestibule of an upper and lower vestibule and is divided into sulci that have labeled labial and buccal sulci and the inner part of the mouth is the oral cavity proper, used by the teeth. Now we start with the outer part of the oral cavity is the lips. We have two fleshy mobile structures guarding the entrance to mouth. We have upper and lower lips that control the entrance of the uh, oral cavity. To the uh, vestibule to the oral cavity proper. The, the consist of the upper and lower lip, they are consist from, from outside to the inside, from the outside of the oral cavity to inside to the vestibule side. First, it is the skin, second, connective tissue. Third layer gland and fourth layer muscles and the inner layer mucous membrane that cover the vestibule from labial to mucosa. 
the lip have red portion of lip whose correlation is caused by rich vascular bed uh, visible to the thin epithelium. This term the vermilion zone. So the definition of the vermilion zone is a portion of lip that have uh, have rich vascular bed visible to the thin epithelium. It is very important for the aesthetic of the any person. Because it is not wet membrane, it must be kept moistened with the tongue to prevent drying. Within the vermilion zone, don't no have any the uh, sweeping gland or that have uh, sweeping the uh, uh, zone. So you must uh, at hot weather you must uh, moist it by the tongue. The, from outside, the upper and lower lip, the skin and the vermilion zone joined at the vermilion border. The vermilion border is the joining between the, the mucous membrane of the vermilion zone and the skin uh, 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 epithelium. It is very important for the setting of the patient. If any injury, you must attain this border to its original uh, position. Now we start with the discussion for upper lip or called a superior lip. Its boundaries laterally by nasolabial loop extending from the alley wing of the nose to short distance lateral to corner of mouth. This is the lateral border of the upper lip. We have slight shallow vertical depression in midline from the nose to vermilion border is the filter, or call it cuboid bow, and just inferior to the depression is the labial tubercle, a flashy map of varying size in the vermilion zone. It is a flashy, uh, uh, soft structure that have within lower border of the uh, cuboid bow, or call it filter. Now we discuss the lower lip or call it inferior lip. It's separated from the chin by the labiomental group. The labiomental group is location between the lower skin lip and the skin of the chin. The upper and lower lip, the two lips are connected laterally by labial commissure, which are thin fold of tissue that are easily viewed when the mouth is slightly open. This commercial is you can see it when have not a slight opening to the between the upper and lower lip. We have a slight depression is noted in the center of labial commercial known as the commercial lip pits. What that have in the corner of the lip between upper and lower lip. The oral fissure, or call it rima of the mouth, is the zone between the superior and inferior lip, which may be open or when the two lips are in contact with each other is closed. So the fissure, oral fissure, that have open or closed condition when the separation between upper and lower lip called open when in contact called closed the blood supply of the upper and lower lip from facial artery there are superior labial artery and inferior labial artery branch of facial artery that supply the blood supply for upper and lower lip. The venous drainage from to the venous drain to the facial vein from upper and lower facial uh, labial vein. This 
and then the venous of the upper and lower lip or the facial vein. The lymphatic drainage of the upper lip to the uh, at the side of upper lip and the center of upper lip to the submandibular lip node. But lower lip at the center of lower lip then to submental lip node. But at the side of lower lip to the submandibular lip node. That is drainage of lymphatic vessels. The innervation, we have sensory innervation for the skin and the mucosa of lips. The lips contains numerous sensory receptors that are useful for judging temperature and texture of food. This sensory innervation for the hotness and coldness of the, any material that enters to the food. And its texture is soft, hard, hard solid, texture of the foods. The second part at the lateral side of the mouth is the cheek. The cheek, the lateral of the tibule is made up of proximator muscle which is covered on the outside by fascia and skin and is lined by mucous membrane. The side of the face and the side of the oral cavity is called cheek. The cheek from outside to inside, the skin, the muscle, the uh, and then the mucous membrane, we call mucous membrane, that have formed the lateral side of the focal vestibule. Within the buccal mucosa, opposite the upper second molar teeth or between the first and second molar teeth, a small papillae is present on the mucous membrane, marking the opening of duct of parotid salivary duct. The sinus duct is opening the salivary saliva that drain from the parotid gland drain to the upper vestibule between the seven or first and seven, uh, six and seven molar. Inside to the lip and cheek, the structure called it the vestibule. What's the vestibule? It is a slit-like space, lift or space between lips and cheek externally and the teeth and gingiva of dental arch internally when the teeth are occlusion. So when the mouth is closed, so the lip is closed, there are space. The space is a slight slit-like that or call it lift. This space between the upper and lower lip or anteriorly and the buccal from posteriorly. From outside, from inside the ever process and the gingiva uh, from uh, and the upper and lower dentition. Superiorly and inferiorly the vestibule is limited by reflection of mucous membrane from the lip and cheek onto alveolar mucosa. So, the connection between the lip and the uh, uh, alveolar mucosa from anterior part and the lip and the buccal mucosa from lower part is the uh, superior limit for upper jaw and inferior limit for lower jaw. The space between the upper and lower uh, dentition of the three way space that in rest condition, not in occlusal condition. This is in class one uh, dental uh, dentition. The, there are spacing between the horizontal and vertical position. In posterior space, two to three millimeter or movement light variable vertical centrics, not in occlusal centrics. The vestibule
you will communicate with the exterior through the oral fissure of the lip to the outside of the mouth and communicate with the oral cavity proper via the interdental space and interval posterior to that smaller teeth in the dental arc. So, the communication with the outside of the body by the uh, lip to, uh, and communication to the oral cavity proper to the uh, interdental space and the spacing distal to the third or last molar for upper jaw that is maxillary fibrosity and for lower jaw that form retromolar area. Laterally, the vestibule is referred to as buccal vestibule, whereas anteriorly in the region of the lip is termed labial vestibule. So the vestibule divided in two parts according to its location. Anteriorly, that is beyond the uh, upper and lower lip, called it labial vestibule, and posteriorly lateral to the uh, cheek, called it buccal vestibule. The mucous membrane or, and, or muco labial fold that I call it fornix represents the location point at which the originally named vestibular mucosa turns to become the alveolar mucosa. The area that connects the labial or vocal mucosa with the alveolar mucosa is called muco labial or folds or fornix. The bulge extending through the labial vestibule from the alveolar ridge over the root of superior canine tooth is the canine eminence, where the shallow depression just lateral to it called it canine fossa. There are a prominence of the bony projection of alveolar process at the area of canine due to its large root that forming a canine eminence. And this distal to it, the canine and mesial to it, small fossa called it incisive fossa. Protruding into the roof of buccal vestibule in the vicinity of third molar are zygomatic process of maxilla. When move your finger in the vestibule and go posteriorly, we feel a projection of prominence of the idiomatic process of maxilla. Nearly the vertical anterior border of masseter muscle may also be palpated in posterior buccal vestibule because it extends from the angle of mandible to the zygomatic arch. The masseter muscle, as we discussed it with the muscle of vestication, is origin, beginning of its origin from the buccal vestibule that extends from the angle of the mandible to the zygomatic arch. The region of maxilla posterior to the zygomatic process and superior to last molar is the maxillary fibrosity. It is distal to the third last molar that call it maxillary fibrosity. Within the buccal vestibule, mainly at the upper vestibule, the parotid gland emits its salivary excretion into the buccal vestibule at the small orifice opposite the second maxillary molar. This opening, which appears elevated in mucosa, is the parotid papilla. Oh, this is the opening of the sternum. We have within the major salivary gland and other set is called minor salivary gland. Several other small minor salivary gland that are regionally named for example buccal salivary gland, labial salivary gland also open into the vestibule via microscopic opening of the microscopic duct to the microscopic gland to the oral cavity. We have extra reflection of labial mucosa appear as fold of tissue in the midline attached to superior and inferior lips to the gentula. These are the labial frenula, the single of a frenula frenum. So it's the frenum that have upper frenum and lower frenum.
between them. So we have two frenulae. The superior labial frenula is also so broad, uh, broadly attached that it interferes with normal eruption of the central incisor, thereby producing a diastema. That diastema is the space between upper to central incisor due to large or big frenula upper superior labial frenum. To correct of this condition usually requires surgical removal of the frenum between the central incisor to permit to return to normal position. In young patient, young age, we can remove it by surgical operation and can return to central incisor to its normal position and close the space that is called diastem. Now, when we go inside, we have other soft situ tissue, the structure called it the gingiva that contains the teeth. If extracted to the teeth, the gingival chain is named to gum. It is covered by the gingival mucosa, which folds back into itself to form a pre-edge, known as gingival margin, which surrounding the inferior margin of the clinical crown of the teeth. So the gingiva that surrounding the alveolar process with the uh, alveolar uh, gingival uh, mucosa. It is the uh, upper or uh, uh, end of the gingiva, call it the gingival margin that surrounding the uh, uh, end of the crown, called the cervical margin of the crown. The vestibular gingiva in this uh, region become continuous with the gingiva of all cavity papa. The tendental papillae lies between the teeth in the tendental space. And the molar papillae is that specialized area of gingiva just that the last molar in both dental arch. So there are retromolar area just that to the upper third molar and regular tuberosity just that to upper third molar. The coronal most aspect of endotype dental papillae of molar region usually possess a connective concavity known as call. Call that is around the, the, the molar teeth of the uh, cervical part of the tooth. The Below the gingiva, we have other type of mucosa called alveolar mucosa. Overlay the alveolar process of both the mandibular and mandibular arch. The color of the alveolar mucosa is red due to caused by the visibility of its vascularity through the non keratinized epithelium of its mucosa. The alveolar mucosa is non keratinized, not like the alveolar mucosa is keratinized. So it is thin layer and it is very rich. So the color of the gingiva is pinkish in color, but the, the color of the alveolar mucosa is the uh, red in color. Where the alveolar mucosa blends into remaining vestibular mucosa is not easily distinguished. However, a rather sharp scallop line there gingival junction separate the gingival mucosa from the alveolar mucosa. Now go to the second part of the mouth is called oral cavity proper, the real oral cavity. The oral cavity proper or call it mouth proper has a roof which is formed by a hard pellet front and soft pellet behind, and we have the floor is formed largely by the anterior two thirds of the tongue and by reflection of mucous membrane from side of the tongue to the gum of the, the mandible. In midline, a fold of mucous membrane called frenum of tongue connects the under surface of tongue to the floor of mouth. The 
on each side of the freedom a small pavilion, on the summit of which is the office of the of Sabadilazan. From the pavilion around a ridge of mucous membrane extends backward and laterally is produced by the underlying sublingual gland and is called sublingual fold. Okay, then in the floor of mouth we have a fold called its sublingual fold that contains sublingual gland. And it is formed the floor within the floor of mouth. Now the roof of the oral cavity proper that forms the palate which forms the roof of oral cavity and the floor of the nasal cavity, consists of bony hard pellet and anterior leaf and soft pellet posterior. We have anterior two third is hard pellet and posterior third is soft pellet. The, now we have the hard pellet, that bony structure that forms the roof of the mouth which is valid shape formed by the palatine process of maxilla and ear to third and the horizontal phase of palatine bone posterior one third is bounded by the radial margin anteriorly and laterally and merged posteriorly with soft pellet. The body structure have two bones that form the uh, roof of the uh, mouth. The first anterior to third is the palatine process of maxilla and posterior third the horizontal plate of the palatine bone and its boundary uh, uh, at the midline we have palatine suture and bounded by the dentition upper dentition of the upper uh, maxilla now what's the heart palate is made of bone and osteum is covered with the mucous membrane in which are embedded tiny axillary cerebral glands. The mucous membrane firmly attached to periosteum due to absence of conductive tissue beneath the mucosa. In the heart palate, we have bony structure of maxilla and palatine bone and covered by periosteum and firmly adherence of the mucosa of the heart palate with the periosteum that form. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, due to no uh, any conductive tissue between the mucosa and the periosteum. Uh, Near the anterior margin of each palatine process, just behind the incisor, is an incisive foramen which passes incisive nerve and blood vessel. That is the terminal branch of nasopalatine nerve is a branch of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. We have fold for a transverse palatine fold or palatine rogi are located along the mucous membrane of the heart palate. This structure serves a friction ridge against which the tongue is placed during swallowing and it is uh, very uh, fine. Uh, in posterior side of the heart palate, but it is present will uh, appear as in the anterior to the anterior part of the heart palate. The anterior part of the heart palate called pre maxilla between the two canines is the, the area between two canines imperiologically have divided from the rest of maxilla by uh, and enclosed by a tiny and called an anterior part of our first premaxilla. We have two foramen at the posterior border of our heart palate within the horizontal plate of palatine bone. The anterior one it is larger, greater palatine foramen and extends greater palatine groove anterior to the first premolar and past the greater palatine nerve and blood vessels that supply the heart palate posterior to premaxilla and posterior one there is a palatine foramen past the a palatine nerve and blood vessels that supply the soft palate we have 
palatine process. This palatine process normally occurs at about 12 weeks of gestation in uterine life. The failure to fuse results in cleft palate, often accompanied by cleft lip lateral to the midline cleft palate and lip, and by turned by surgery. Surgical product with good cosmetic result, but cleft palate makes it difficult for the uh, infant to generate the section needs for the nursing. It's one of congenital anomalies of the, the human being is the cleft lip and palate. It is ugly in shape and the uh, cleft palate cannot suck the uh, milk from mother, so we must need to refer to the uh, normal uh, baby. Posterior to the heart palate, we have a soft palate. It is mobile structure within the mouth. The soft palate is flap supported by the sterile border of the heart palate and projects downward, backward, separating the nasal part from the oral part of the pharynx. We have oropharynx and nasopharynx. The nasopharynx superiorly and oropharynx posteriorly and above the larynx and within the pharynx. It is that have very important to separate by soft palate to be not enter the food to the nasal cavity. The skeleton of soft palate is formed by fibrous palatine amelinosis, which is insertion of muscle of the soft palate. The skeleton of the soft palate, not a hard structure, is a soft structure called it palatine amelinosis, is extension from the posterior border of the heart palate within the soft palate to the uh, posterior end of the uh, soft palate at the center of the heart and soft palate. The soft palate is highly mobile, which is important in preventing food and drinking entering the nasal pharynx and nose. The mucous membrane at the lower part is covered by five supremes epithelium, but on the upper part is posterior nasal pharynx served with the epithelium ciliated cuboidal. The mucous membrane in the origin is served with numerous mucous glands. The mucous membrane within the oral cavity is the, the epithelium of the oral cavity is the five supremes epithelium, but from the nasal part is the nasal mucosa is the cuboidal in shape. The direction of soft palate and hard palate is mainly visible as faint and rare groove in the millimeters covering the oral surface, mucous membrane or covering the oral surface of the palate. That verbilion zone, or we call it verbilion line, that have the aim of the denture to be not dislodged or not have the unstable denture. Membrane and have the blood supply of the heart and soft palate by first nasal palatine artery that supplies the premaxillary area from premolar to premolar and later palatine that supply the heart palate and the cell palatine that supply the soft palate. The muscles that attach to the soft palate, the first muscle is called divator villi palatini, second one tensor villi palatini, third one the palatal ossus and palatal pharyngeus and the mucous muscles the uvulae. Uh, the divator villi palatini is uh, uh, origin from cartilage of uh, pharyngeal tympanity, the tube and pitous part of the temporal bone, and its insertion within palatine aponeurosis. Its innervation is pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve through the pharyngeal plexus. Its action relieves of palate during uh, swelling and uh, yawning. Second muscle transverse will lie palatine. Its origin from scaphoid fossa of middle trigot plate, the spine of sphenoid bone, and cartilage of uh, uh, pharyngeal tympanic tube.
this insertion of the palatine aponeurosis is innervation by middle trigger nerve of the uh, third division of trigeminal nerve of uh, that to autotendine. This action maintains our soft palate and open mouth in, uh, if if you are confined to during the swallowing and yawning. The other three muscles is not within the soft palate, it's outside of the soft palate. The first one called palate glossa is origin for palate and aperiosis. This insertion at the side of the tongue and this innervation, the pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve, can uh, via pharyngeal flexor. Its action elevate posterior part of the tongue and draw soft palate into the tongue. The second muscle, palate of pharyngeus, is origin from hard palate and palatine aphronosis. This insertion lateral of the pharynx. Again, it's an innervation branch, pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve and via pharyngeal flexors. Its action tensor soft palate and to lie with it pharyngeal superiorly, anteriorly, and uh, inferiorly uh, during swallowing. The uh, muscles uvulae, its origin from posterior nasal spine and the palatine aponeurosis, its insertion within the mucosa of uvulae, its innervation by pharyngeal branch of vagus nerve or via pharyngeal plexus, its action shortening uvulae and pull is superiorly to close the space between the uh, oral pharynx and nasal pharynx when the person eats. This figure shows the muscle of the soft palate, levator villi palatini, tensor villi palatini, with uh, insertion within palatine aponeurosis, and we have palato pharyngeus muscle and uh, pharyngeus muscle that within a muscular uvulae that form the major bulky of the soft palate. This figure from other view, you can see tensor villi palatini, evator villi palatini that form the soft palate, and we can see the uvula at the posterior border of the soft palate. The innervation of the soft palate by sensory innervation by lesser palatine nerve is thus supplied is by lesser palatine artery, venous drainage by lesser palatine vein is drainage to the uh, side of the stomatular lymph node. Within the oral cavity, we have the movable structure called the tongue. The tongue is highly mobile muscular organ, its effect on speech and swallowing. The tongue is a mass of striated muscle covered with the mucous membrane. So it is muscular organ and it is freely movable on the side of the mouth. We divide the tongue to two parts. It anterior two parts lie within the oral cavity on the mouth and posterior third lie within the pharynx. The muscles attach the tongue to silent process and the soft palate above and to the mandible and the hyoid bone posteriorly the root of the tongue and the anteriorly free mobile end. So it is two part, the anterior two part, the anterior two third is free mobile end, the posterior third is attached to the mandible and to the hyoid bone. The tongue is divided into right and left half by median fibrous septum and it is symmetrical in shape. We can see at the side of the tongue the divided to upper surface called dorsum and lower surface called ventral surface. The upper surface is uh, uh, satisfied squamous, the lower surface is unsatisfied squamous. The mucous membrane of the upper surface of the tongue can be divided into an inferior posterior part by V-shaped sulcus. This sulcus called the sulcus terminalis that 
divided the time to two parts, the anterior two thirds and posterior third, and it is empirically divided to these two parts. So innervation and blood supply is different from anterior two thirds from posterior third. The sarcus here divided into two, the tongue into a tier two third of oral part and posterior of the pharyngeal parts. The apex of the sarcus project backward and is marked by a small chest uh, forming cica. So the twin two uh, arm of sarcus, we have foramen called it foramen cecum, is not in the bone but in the soft tissue of the tongue. The foramen cecum is an embryologic remnant and marks the site of the upper end of thyroid gland and the upper end of thyroid rostral duct. The anterior two thirds of the dorsal surface are covered by mucous membrane, tightly bounded down to the underlying muscle and as bearing stratified squamous epithelium with numerous papillae over the irregularity of lamina propria. There are papillae within the dorsal surface of the tongue, this for tasting a food. The papillae have uh, many types of papillae. The first type is a common type is filiform papillae. are two to three millimeter long and arranged in rows parallel to the arm of sulcus terminalis. The whole structure resembles minute fire tree. Due to three point eight, they are most numerous part of the filiform papillae. The second art type of the papillae is punctiform papillae. It has a slight constricted sac and hemispherical upper part of the uh, which appears as bright red spot due to its rich blood supply. They are most commonly seen in toward the side and the tip of the tongue. Taste buds are present on the minor sphingum papillae. They are less than numerous in type and its number. The third type is valid papillae, and it is about 12 in numbers and are largest of lingual papillae. They are parallel and immediately anterior to the sulcus terminale. They are surrounded by a deep circular port. The surface area bears a large number of serious gland called the one epinal gland, open into the bottom of the furrow and help to rinse uh, uh, the area around the papillae. Other test pads are found in the palatodosans arch, a soft pellet, uh, and the posterior surface of the epiglottis and posterior surface of the epiglottis and posterior surface of uh, posterior and posterior wall of the pharynx as far down as the inferior margin of the cause cartilage, this extension of the valid papillae. And last type is foliate papillae, as a vertical fold as the posterior part of lateral margin of the tongue. These are rudimentary in men, but not present in man. Other test parts are found on the palatogrossal arch, the soft palate, the posterior surface of the epiglottis, and the posterior wall of the pharynx as far down as the inferior margin of the cricoid cartilage. The test part, only four sensation can feel by test part. This uh, sensation, sweet, bitter, acid, and sour. The distribution of taste sensation may be made up into this figure. The anterior part of the much part of the tongue is for taste. The lateral side of the anterior part of the tongue by salt, posterior to it, a source of acid, and the posterior as a, a, the area between the uh, anterior to the to posterior third. This is for bitter and can feel the bitter in the south palate and in the or of pharynx, we can feel it. The posterior third of mucous membrane is divided of papillae, and it is right into numerous low elevation by presence of nodules of lymphoid tissue and submucous layer as single tonsil. 
The ventral surface is smooth and is covered by a thin membrane of the lining, which is deep red and firmly attached to the connective tissue. Due to its it's not keratinized, so it is a thin and can uh, reflect the color of underlying structure. On each side of the frenum is a fold of mucous membrane called plesa fibrillata. Between the frenum and the plesa, the deeply well vein can be seen through the thin mucous membrane. The large, free, uh, large frenum needs two times time. If the by uh, uh, growth of any baby, the tongue become larger, so the uh, lingual frenum become really smaller. But if it's attached to the, the tip of the tongue and with the ayur process, so this condition called the tongue tie, and must uh, treat it as soon as possible to be uh, babies can eat and can speak. Associated with the mucous membrane are numerous lingual glands. Over the posterior third of the dorsum, there are mainly mucous secretion. Over the anterior dorsum, there are mainly mucous secretion. Over the anterior two third, the serous glands are found opening into the neighborhood of the teeth, but especially in the sulci of the valid papillae. The muscle of the tongue. We have intrinsic muscle and extrinsic muscle. The intrinsic muscle is origin and its insertion within the bulky of the tongue and have four types of muscle. The superior lingual longitudinal and inferior longitudinal and transverse and vertical. The superior longitudinal is origin of mucous fibers layer and lingual septum. Its insertion in the margin and mucous membrane of the tongue. Innervation by hypoglossal nerves, the 12th pineal nerve. Its main action, pleural, at tip and side of the tongue superiorly and shortness the tongue. The inferior longitudinal fibers, the root of the tongue and body of the hyoid bone, its origin, its insertion in the apex of the tongue, its innervation by 12th pineal nerve, its hypoglossal nerve, its main action, pleural tip of the tongue inferiorly and shortness the tongue. The third muscle, transverse muscle, is with the origin in the lingual septum and its insertion fibrous tissue at the margin of the tongue. Its innervation by hypoglossal nerve is main action narrow and elongate the tongue. The last type of muscle, intrinsic muscle, is vertical muscle. Up its origin from superior surface of border of the tongue, its insertion inferior surface of border of the tongue, its innervation by hypoglossal nerve and its main action flatten and avoidance the tongue. This figure shows cross section at the axial section to the tongue shows the superior longitudinal transverse, inferior longitudinal, and we can see the styloglossus, hyoglossus, and genoglossus muscle that form an extrinsic muscle. So the extrinsic muscles, the first one genoglossus, and second one hyoglossus, and the syloglossus, and the last one palatoglossus. The genoglossus is origin from superior part of the mental spine of the mandible. Its insertion dorsum tongue and of tongue and body of hyoid. Its innervation hypoglossal nerve twelve to the nerve. Its action depressed tongue. Its posterior part full tongue anteriorly for protrusion. Hyoglossal muscle is origin body and greater form of the uh, hyoid bone, its insertion the side and inferior strips of the tongue, its innervation by hypoglossal nerve, its main action depress and retract the tongue. The other muscle is syloglossus muscle, its origin from silent process of temporal bone and stylohyoid ligament, its insertion at the side and inferior aspect of the tongue. Its innervation is hyoglossal nerve. Its action retracts tongue and draws it uh, up to create a through for swallowing. The last muscle is palatoglossus. Its origin from palatine aponeurosis of soft palate. Its insertion side of the tongue. 
and it's only muscle not elevated by hypercostal, but in a great way, the cranial nerve vagus nerve through the pharyngeal plexus. And it's a, a main action to elevate the posterior part of the tongue. This figure shows the muscle intrinsic and extrinsic muscle of the tongue. The extrinsic muscle, genoglossus, genohyoid, hyoglossus, and styloglossus muscles. There are other muscles called it chondroglossus muscle. It's a slip of muscle, its origin from the lesser corn of the hyoid bone and ascending bit to blend with the intrinsic lingual muscle of hyoglossal muscles and is often as part of that muscles. The innervation of the tongue. The sensory innervation of the tongue. The mucous membrane covering the anterior two-thirds of the tongue is supplied by lingual nerve for general sensation and taste fiber from anterior to third of the tongue, excluding the valid papillae and in the cordate penny branch of facial nerve. The motor innervation of muscle of the tongue. Both intrinsic and extrinsic muscle innervated by hypocostal nerve, except palatal cell is innervated by phalangeal plexus as the branch of the vagus nerve. The blood supply of the tongue, the main source of blood to the tongue, bilingual artery, branch of external carotid artery, and from the tonsillar branch of facial artery, and the small lingual branch of the ascending palatine artery, and ascending branch pharyngeal and maxillary artery. And it is very rich blood supply and have strong action of the tongue. The venous lineage is via the lingual nerve and deep lingual vein. Lymphatic drainage. Drainage from the tongue anterior to the valid papillae is into, into marginal and central vessels, posterior to papillae into dorsal vessels. The marginal vessels receive lymph from the tip of the tongue, which descend under the mucous membrane on the inferior surface of the tongue and pierce myohyoid muscle to drain it mostly into submultiple nodes to jugular or mohyoid nodes. Sometimes drain into submultiple nodes which ran into deep cervical nodes. The vessels arising on one side may cross it on its under surface to a node of opposite side. The central vessel receives lymph from remainder of the tongue anterior to the papillae, which is in between the genodosus close to the median parent and ran into jugular omohyoid and jugular diagnostic and submandular lymph nodes. The dorsal vessel ran bilaterally into the jugular digestive nodes and to the certain extent into the jugular or nodes. The movement of the tongue. We have many movements done protrusion, retraction, and depression and uh, elevation. The protrusion of the tongue may be through about the inogrosous muscle on both sides acting together. Retraction of the tongue is produced by cellulosus and hyoglossus muscle on both sides acting together. Depression of the tongue is produced by hyoglossal and uh, genoglossus muscle on both sides acting together. Retraction and elevation of posterior third of the tongue is produced by cellulosus and palatoglossus muscle on both sides acting together. The last part of the mouth is the floor of mouth. The floor is lined with a smooth, thin mucous membrane similar to the under surface of the tongue, like the ventral surface of the tongue. The fold at lower surface of tongue to floor called lingual frenum, and either side of small elevation, the sublingual papillae, which the orifice of the submandular cerebral duct, which extends posteriorly as a ridge formed by the, by, uh, the sublingual fold produced by underlying sublingual gland. The muscle of mouth. The main bulky muscle is myelohyoid muscle. It's 
form the floor of mouth. Its origin from the folding of a large edge. It has three posterior edge. So it is flat muscle. The posterior cell fibers run medially and downward to insert it into the anterior surface of body of the hyoid bone. The anterior fiber pass in medial and downward to meet the corresponding fiber of opposite side at medial raphi, which run from internal surface of symphysis menti to front of the hyoid bone is the raphi. Innervation, motor innervation by a myelohyoid branch of the inferior nerve of the <coughs> posterior division of the medial division of the sagittal nerve. Its action to elevate the floor of mouth and higher bone are when the higher bone fix depress the mandible, so assist in opening the mouth. The second muscle is general higher muscle. Its origin from the inferior mental spine and run backward and downward to insert it into a certain anterior surface of body of the higher bone. Its lies on the medial part of the upper surface of my head muscle in contact with its low of the opposite side. Its innervation by a branch of the high muscle nerve. Its main action to elevate and draw forward the head bone or depress the mandible. The other muscle is hyoglossal muscle. Its quadrilateral sheet, sheet of muscle is a sheet like quadrilateral shape. <coughs> its origin from the upper surface of the whole length of lateral corn and of lateral part of the body of the highest bone. Its fibers ascend vertically in parasagittal plane to the inserted into the side of the tongue where they interagitated with the fibers of thyroglossus muscle. The Structure that related to the uh, hyoglossal muscle at the lateral surface and the superficial, superficial surface is related to the following structure that it is superficial to hyoglossal muscle. The first one, lingual nerve, and the deep loop of submandibular cervical gland, submandibular duct, hyoglossal nerve, deep lingual vein, thylohyoid muscle, and the last structure, intermediate tendon of digastric muscle. The middle surface or the inside surface is related to glossopharyngeal nerve, thyrohyoid ligament, the lingual artery, and you know, hyoid muscle is from inside of the hyoglossal muscle. The innervation by hyoglossal nerve to the cranial nerve is action to depress the tongue. The nerve within the floor of mouth the first lingual nerve, second hyoglossal nerve, and last one glossopharyngeal nerve. The blood vessel of the floor of mouth by lingual artery branch of the external carotid artery. They have two veins that drain the floor of mouth, the deep lingual vein and dorsal lingual vein. Thank you for your listening to these lectures.